Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition's top stories. Students at the National Sports Academy are urged by Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chasney to take advantage of the unique opportunity the school provides. The New Beginnings Transit Home creates a pathway for youth at risk. And the Lightning Aquatic Swim Club makes a splash in its back-to-school drive. The nation's students return to the classroom on Monday, 7th September 2020, as the new academic year opened. The enforcement of COVID-19 protocols was in full effect as the ministries of education and health worked toward a safe learning environment amid the pandemic. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer has called on parents to help their children understand the protocols and adhere to them. We do have mass breaks. There is a provision for the use of face shields, but we continue to speak about the hand washing because we know that our children will interact socially. They should also interact socially, but we need to maintain our hand washing as a constant practice, which is based on the advice of our health professionals. Dr. Meyer says several training sessions were held with the various stakeholders in order to ensure a safe environment for all. So we've had training for our cooks, we've had training for our drivers who are on the subsidy program. Additionally, the Department of Education has met with the Minibus Association and other members of environmental health as well as the Department of Health, all in the interest of looking at our various stakeholders. We've also met with the National Workers Association, the Senior Teachers Union, you know, all of that looking at the various stakeholders, our support staff, our teachers, our administrators, how best can we pool our resources together with our parents and the wider populace. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer. And while the academic year officially opened Monday 7th of September, a number of schools will reopen at a later date due to rehabilitation works. Monrepo Passios Combined, Denry Primary, and the Larishus Combined Schools will reopen on Wednesday 9th September 2020. Entrepo Secondary, Moshi Combined, and Les Etang Combined Schools will reopen on Monday 14th September 2020. In the meantime, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney paid a visit to the National Sports Academy on Monday as the students and teachers ushered in the new school year. The visit follows a tour by the Prime Minister of Schools on Friday, 4th September. We have more in this report. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney surprised students at the National Sports Academy with a visit as they settled in on the first day of the academic year. The School of Excellence in Sports is the first and only boarding school on Ireland. Accompanied by officials of the Ministry of Education, Prime Minister Chastney interacted with the teachers and assessed the physical works done at the school. Wanting to hear directly from the students, Honorable Chastney visited individual classrooms and chatted with the aspiring professionals. He encouraged them to utilize their time wisely and capitalize on the opportunities that come before them. In times of uncertainty like right now, the most important thing I think is to focus on the things that you know to be true. So things that you don't know, it's okay not to know it, but focus on the things that you do know. So do not use this as an opportunity not to do your schoolwork. Do not use this as an opportunity not to focus on your sport. And maintain, if you're not doing it already, and if you've not figured this out, the only way to be successful in life is to be the best. The visit to the National Sports Academy was preceded by a tour of schools on Friday, 4th September. The Prime Minister, along with the Minister for Education, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, and education officials, spent the day witnessing firsthand the rehabilitation works at the various schools. At the Clendon Mason Memorial School, construction crews were busy undertaking electrical and plumbing works, painting and installing safety and security measures. Theodore Charles is the principal of the Clendon Mason Memorial School. You have a school which has been there for years, and yes, there is some fencing at the back which is not 100%, but the entrance is just open to everybody and anything. And it was causing a lot of um, risk issue for our students and our staff. 
and safety was put in serious questions. And after writing to the Ministry of Education, I'm very pleased that they've actually decided, yes, during this summertime um, repair works, that they would facilitate us. And um, we are glad that this is really happening right now. Um, any little bits that's not done, I don't think it's going to seriously affect our reopening. Principal Charles commended the Prime Minister for embarking on the tour, stating that it indicates to students, teachers and parents the level of commitment Honorable Chastney has to the education sector. What the Prime Minister has done is that he's actually shown an interest in, in what is happening at the school and um, I'm very pleased that he came but at least we we'll probably like to see him a bit more often at our schools throughout the island. Over the Larissus Combined School, repairs to the roof were being done, along with painting and electrical works. Our students will be walking into brand new classrooms with brand new ceiling, well lit, because I can see I'm quite impressed with the electrical works which has been done. The school is no longer dark, it is now well lit. I say hallelujah to this. Our students have been given some brand new furniture as well, so when they come in, it's going to be a lot of brand new things for them. When I first came, the school was a bit dark and coming to the school on an evening, but right now with the electrical works which has been done, even the outside of the school has some really lovely lights. So this, I can say, it, it really lifts the, the face of the school. And for all schools on island, they too have received much desired facelifts. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reports in. The New Beginnings Transit Home has become the first institution on island to complete aggression replacement training for juveniles at risk. We have a report on a graduation ceremony that was held for the participants. Eight young ladies in the care of the New Beginnings Transit Home are better equipped to kick antisocial habits after successfully completing the first ever aggression replacement training, ART, in St. Lucia. For 10 weeks, three days a week, the girls were engaged in the three components of ART, social skills, moral reasoning, and anger control. ART is a program based on habilitation, meaning teaching which was never previously learned. So we have, we have social skills, we have anger control, and we have moral reasoning. Sometimes we have our kids, and we just assume they know what to say, thank you, they know how to say, but there are some children who have never taught how to say thank you, how to say please. So that is where art come in, where we teach them new skills, or maybe sometimes skills they have learned, but just way of displaying it. That was art facilitator Maria Flavian. The art initiative falls under the Juvenile Justice Reform Project, the JJRP, at the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. The project's social research officer, Lavon Verdant daisy says, efforts have been ongoing to run the aggression replacement training at all institutions that manage juveniles at risk who have displayed aggressive behavior. The New Beginnings Transit Home is the first institution on the island to complete the training from the JJRP. This is the first session at Transit Home, and so you're very much trendsetters with regards to <laughs> starting and complete. We really hope that this was useful for you. We really hope that you continue to use the lessons that you learned and the friendships that you make and the support that you have to use these life skills. I say life skills because these are things that we don't just need to use this week or that they will only that they were only necessary for the last 10 weeks, but that as you continue through life, that you apply all of the lessons learned and you share it. Transit Home Manager Avis Inglis thanked the ministry for offering this special training and commended the girls for their participation and application of the skills learned so far. Now, I know that you have been practicing because the staff would come back and say certain things. The children are practicing, they are breathing, they are doing such and such. And we know that you are practicing. What we want from you is when you leave transit home, do not leave those skills by the big gate. Take those skills wherever you go, those social skills and the other ones, take them wherever you go and utilize them. Because these, these three areas is going to allow you to change your behavior, to change your mind, to change your lifestyle, and to reach your goals. Attending the art program, it was 
so nice it was really nice you know, getting to know something new and getting to help my behaviors and i know it will help me in the later life you know as i go on that was not something i was really looking forward to the first time i heard about art was like me i don't want to go to that so that art, i was in the class well it was good i wanted to sleep because in the beginning it was boring me but then afterwards i got the the gist from it i understand what art really was about well i would like to say thank you to auntie viviana and auntie maria especially for coming up with the idea to introduce art to us at the new beginning chance home and I'd like to tell them that we really appreciated it and it will go a long way in our life, not only now and in the class, but when we leave the walls of New Beginning Transitum, that we'll still embrace it and use it out there and introduce it to our friends and just lend them a helping hand. So I'd like to say thank you to all of you all. The New Beginnings Transit Home is a temporary residential place of safety for children between the ages of 2 to 16 years who are victims of child abuse and severe neglect, and who are in need of care and protection. From the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. The processing of passengers at the ferry terminal in Castries has been made more efficient with the installation of a baggage scanner. The equipment was handed over to the Customs and Excise Department by the Ministry of Tourism under the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project. More in this report from Lisa Joseph. The World Bank-funded OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project, ORTCP, is being implemented in Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and St. Lucia, with one of the key objectives being the facilitation of the movement of tourists within the participating countries using ferries. It is against this background that a request by the Customs and Excise Department to the Ministry of Tourism was fulfilled under the ORTCP. Project manager Dr. Lorraine Nicholas noted the importance of the ferry terminal to St. Lucia's tourism travel sector. The number of passengers using the ferry service had increased over the years and that the baggage scanner will equip customs officials with an essential tool to inspect customer baggage in a fast and efficient manner. The scanner will allow the detection of illegal weapons and other items in much more efficient manner human intervention. Also, the scanner can be used to scan many pieces of luggage quickly, improving the speed at which passengers are processed. So we are very pleased that we were able to contribute to expediting the passenger clearance process here at the ferry terminal. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Donalyn Vite, says the ferry terminal plays an integral role in the Caribbean travel market particularly Martinique, Guadeloupe, and Dominica, and as such, outfitting the facility with the necessary technology and infrastructure will serve the industry well. Over the past two years, there's been significant upgrade in the product at the ferry terminal, but of course we know with regards to the physical upgrade, there must be a level of infrastructural upgrade to support that with ICT. Um, customs, we, they are very dear to our hearts as officers of the government service, and we know the, the sort of strife they've been under at this ferry terminal with the, the volume of baggage that normally comes with the visitors and our returning nationals and how they've been able to process. Out of our OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project, one of the things for the ministry was to critically assess within the services that are provided within the Castries Basin especially, how we could improve those services and at the same time maintain customer satisfaction at the fore. So for us, working with customs, it was a no-brainer to identify the needs of the ferry terminal and to be able to upgrade it with the infrastructure, the technology that is required to support the human resources already given by government. Acting Comptroller of Customs, Peter Chico, welcomed the baggage scanner indicating that the use of technology will improve the department's risk management capabilities. The St. Lucia Customs and Excise Department has been calling for scanners and non-intrusive technology equipment for quite some time, particularly when it re relates to the check examination of passengers and passenger baggage. I am certain, P.S., that this donation from your ministry will go a long way 
in helping the customs department meet its mandate to examine clear passengers, provide that quality service that is always expected of the customs and excise department. The customs officers received training in the use of the baggage scanner by the director of technical services at Sextus Technologies. And a baggage carousel has also been provided and will be installed at the ferry terminal. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Lightning Aquatic Swim Club has made a donation of school supplies to the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. This is the fourth annual charity drive by the club. Public Relations Officer Coretta Crooks-Charles says Lightning Aquatics is a family-oriented swim club that is concerned with the development of its members in and out of the pool. Like many um, persons in St. Lucia, some of our own members have had difficulties because of COVID, whether it's um, losing jobs or um, getting you know, decreased salaries. But um, we at the Lightning Aquatics Swim Club strongly believe in giving no matter how small um, and so we are happy that we could put these things together. We have over 20 pairs of shoes. Some are new, some are slightly used. We have school uniforms, books, stationery, school bags. Um, so we are happy that, as you rightfully said, it may not be a lot, but it can put a small dent in, in the, the problems um, affecting some of our parents who don't have. Clearly, we want to thank you. We want to express how grateful we are for your effort. I, as the welfare officer, can tell you it goes a long way. I still have people calling saying, you have anything? Can I get? So it's well appreciated and it will make a little dent in the big, you know, the issue of COVID and everything that's going on now. So I want to thank you very much for pressuring your parents, for trying to get some stuff and for making an effort. The Lightning Aquatic Swim Club was established in 2011 primarily to provide recreational and competitive swimming to St. Lucians of all ages and from different socioeconomic backgrounds. The club competes in a number of swim meets locally and regionally and has had numerous successes. A number of team members have swam on the national swim team. The Department of Health and Wellness informs the public that the dental clinic within the Ancillary Wellness Center will be closed from Monday 7th September 2020 to Friday 18th September 2020. This temporary closure is to ensure the health and safety of all staff and clients by conducting deep cleaning of the dental clinic. During this time, oral health promotion activities will continue to take place in the community and a mobile unit will be established for the care of children. Adult treatment can be accommodated at the dental clinic at Sufre Hospital. The public is advised to call to make an appointment at 459-5001. For more information, you can call the Dental Services Unit in the Department of Health at telephone number 468-5314. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Acquayol. Cut them loose, the anxieties, the worries, open up to possibilities, accept the uncertainties and cut them loose, the bitterness, the hopelessness, plant a seed of hope in your mind, it will grow and flourish in time. Hold on a little longer. Life encourages you to grow. You have so much to offer. Look, tomorrow is waiting to say hello. Don't give up on yourself. Instead, reach out for help. Perhaps it's time to reach out to someone. Call the Health Helpline 203 toll-free anytime to speak to a professional. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Ta Jesse, Monsieur Madame Departement de la Responsabilité, with formation à gouvernement cette ici, à CGIS, et Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle Aquayol. Visitor Primus Hutchinson. Travail pour transformer l'hôpital Victoria pour une facilité pour traiter maladie étouffement, 
qu'a venu pour finir ce matin. Pour que cela qu'a suivi la décision du gouvernement, c'est ce ci pour adresser la situation de maladie corona à pays. Le travail de transformation facile de ça la fini. Et quand il y a une opposition pour que 80 personnes qui ont souffert depuis le corona, faciliter ça là, quand il y a toutes ces nécessités pour protéger les personnes qui sont malades et le public là aussi. Il y a aussi une distance sociale pour opter à des hauts degrés et un système pour continuer à purifier l'air pour toujours établir un environnement pour traiter pour trouver un bon traitement. Faciliter à partir à des façons pour faciliter le traitement de monde qui peine les maladies, comme ça qui confirme les maladies. Existe yo qui a différents degrés de traitement pour recevoir un haut degré d'acceptance médicale et de protection. Pour les présents, faciliter à qui ont capacité pour chez 80 monde, j'en ai 4 5% qui a sous couche et chambre qui a trouvé réhabilitation en bas projet de RVP qui a reçu le traitement. Il y a un plan de l'environnement et de l'aménagement social qui a préparé pour faire assurer que tout le travail en enfin, facilité ça là ni bon et haut protection contre risque de infection et façon et contrôle protection de santé et information qui est très visible. Travail de construction qu'a fait par Scaly Construction Services Limited en bas conduite Teams Incorporated exposé fini bonnet en mars septembre. En parlant de ça, l'investissement par DVRPA, ça, c'est travail des affaires électriques et polyclinique à Gozile et Rons Tanglo pour parler de l'eau, la pluie, chaque capacité de 1 000 gallons et qui facilité aussi Wellness Center La Clary et l'hôpital Soufouye. Rons travail, j'ai trouvé étrangement un système pour traiter de l'eau la pluie. Il y a un os qui est spécialisé en traitement de monde qui a souffert de maladie sévère, qui a fait un appel pour la famille, l'enjeu la main et une compassion pour ce monde. Il y a une discussion et puis officier des affaires communication à département santé, nos Debbie Brown Joseph, explique que la maladie sévère est venue par plusieurs raisons et diverses situations. Madame Brown explique aussi que souvent, la famille pas qu'à ouais et eh ben ça ignore ces signes en monde qui a souffert et puis maladie sévère en plus de là ces situations économiques problèmes sociaux l'autre mauvaise maladie problème de la famille à parmi l'autre qui est comme ça nos brown qui a crié à sou la famille monde qui a souffert et puis maladie sévère ou pas tourner dos à sou ce monde ça là de là, on parle pas les bas ou de là, on parle au tir notre health center pour nos sardis, nos sasa, sur nos sacs vini au tir mon nom et puis quand ils qui ça calé et ben tu vas mener mon nom aller voir docteur pour voir qui ça cas aller et puis et puis mon nom au fait mon nom pour qu'il y ait un limo si on parle vini au health center à chaque bon jour mon nom pour assister mon nom si ou même pas ça mais garder ça ça fait bien mon pas juste quitter mon nom et ben faire mes comme quitter mon nom faire mes coins dans la chambre et then plus tard ou pas ça fait rien balayer depuis ouais changement commencé garder ça ça fait nos brown nous marqué qui département santé qui a offert service à ces différents facilités de santé pour assister et traiter mon qui détruit un cerveau et ben cas au fait et puis mauvais malade de cerveau nous qui service ça c'est bien Moun ki jani sevel distwe epi moun ki panin, moun ki jes vle vidi oti ya moun pou bayan tisipo pou pale bayan moun. Moun nou ka ale vizite moun la kayo si yo pasa vidi oti nou an di den senta. Nou ka examine moun ep nou tout nou pa ka fe se baga la pa kon nou se nou ne pou wid vwe yo an lot koti eban an lot organisation pour aider yo donc à faire ça nous car 
fait éducation by c'est nous qui édu fait éducation c'est mon là et puis public là tout le monde département éducation qui a informé public là avec les parents qui l'école ouvert officiellement lundi le 7 septembre 2020 mais il y a plusieurs écoles qui pas qu'à commencer au point sur date ça là parmi ces écoles là qui a ouvert à d'ailleurs l'autre date c'est l'école Moipo avec Patience l'école première de nuit avec la richesse c'est l'école Salah qui a ouvert mercredi le 9 septembre 2020. L'école secondaire Andrepo, l'école Moshi avec les étangs, qui a ouvert un vieux ouvert lundi le 14 septembre 2020. Toute l'école école ouvert lundi le 7 septembre. Le département d'éducation a pris une apologie et qui a souhaité tout le principal, les teachers et les tuteurs, tout ça qui est bon pour ces autres écoles neuf Salah en bas, on l'a dit, Corona. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trois nouvelles, nous, monsieur, madame. Mon cher monsieur, autant pour regarder, mon cher, une invitation. Je ne peux pas encore citer, conserver la vie. Dernier présent, nous avons une nouvelle. Encore une fois, la vie présente au Chessy. Merci, Appeal Primer. So that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or the YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now. Do stay tuned for more NTN programming.